Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video is an, another update on our pond project. And so today's update is gonna be assembling and putting in our pump and filtration system for what's gonna end up being our waterfall. So today, because we don't have the upper basin installed, all we're gonna be doing is a really basic installation of this setup, just so that way we can mainly get the filter in and the water circulating to help aerate it and to help make sure that the uh, algae and you know bad growth is staying down. So what we got here, the majority of this um, has come from like your typical big box store. So the first thing is gonna be a basic filter. And this is going to help filter out, uh, you know, large sediment and, and you know some medium. And I think it even has like a fine sediment filter in here. So the idea is this hose. Both of these things, that the hose and this, we got from a big box store, uh, along with this filter and this little waterfall start. Um, and we got two things online, which I'll talk about here in a minute. So the idea is that this is going to be the initial point where water is going to get drawn in here, and the bigger stuff is going to get filtered out. The hose is going to come out to a, a pump, which is right here. And this is one of the things that I, we got online, and we got this from the pond guys. Um, so they are all things pond. Of course, we're not endorsing and we're not sponsored by them, but they carry a lot of things that will help out a lot for uh, building ponds. So this pump I particularly liked because it has the option of being either fully submersed in water or completely out of the water. And so I don't want to have to get into the bottom of the pond to be able to do any kind of maintenance or modifications. So I elected to go with this one just so that I could keep it out of the pond. So like I said, hose will, will run from this filter to the inlet of this, which is what's going to draw it in. Then it goes out, and from there, <clears throat> it's going to go into a, this filter here, and um, the water will, will come in and get filtered through here, just at an additional uh, fine sediment filter, and then it's going to come out of there into the other component that we bought also from the pond guys which is a uv filter and as you see the water is going to go in one it spirals around a uv light comes out the other and then then what this does is it's going to help kill microorganisms uh, and algae growth so that way it's going to help keep the water nice and clean and then the hose will run out and feed up to the back of this fill this basin up and then that creates a waterfall so for the time being we're not going to really be doing too much of the cutting of the hoses because without the other basin in place i don't know exactly where all everything is going to be located at so i'm going to cut just enough to be able to get everything attached without sacrificing too much hose so that way later on i can modify as i need to when we're doing the more permanent installation Okay, now on this particular setup, one of the things that you'll notice here is this actually is set for doing like a filter. And so generally your pump, this is designed to have a submersible pump sit inside of it. And then the exit comes out of the hole that's on the top. And then that ends up being your um, your waterfall or your little fountain feature. So the, the exit comes out and does this little display. I'm on the other hand gonna kind of do it in reverse. And we're doing this intentionally because I'm going to have this be the starter. I was toying with the idea of getting a skimmer, but the it dawned on me is that once all the lotus plants are fully grown and mature, the entire surface of the water is going to be completely covered in the lotus leaves, which is going to defeat the purpose of having a skimmer. Like none of the, the, the debris or anything is going to get captured or very minimal and it's probably going to cause more problems than it would to help. So this is gonna be end up being underneath the water. Um, and since we have fish in there, we wanted to have enough of a barrier from the suction of the pump such that the fish don't get caught and sucked up in the pump as well. So that's where this is gonna be. So like I said, the hose is gonna get fed down this way, kind of reverse, and it's gonna suck in, which will draw water through the filters through the top here. Okay, so you see you've got the instruction manual and these are some of the more uh, finer filters. So like I said, the hose is gonna come through here. You have your, your you know, more solid and you have your fine material filter and you even have some of these um, bacteria ball things in here which is to help promote good and healthy bacteria. So the hose will go all the way through this lid, through the two filters and then just come down here and it's gonna suck water in which will draw the water through the top here, through the filters and then put uh, preliminarily filtered water into the pump because you don't want big chunks going in your pump it'll clog your pump
okay? And one of the things that we decided to do was a kind of a three quarter inch tubing, and that's gonna be dependent based off of your pond size. For us, we're gonna have really like two 300 gallon tanks with a little waterfall feature so maybe 700 gallons at most so i'd rather have a little bit more than not enough uh three quarter inch is going to be fine and the only thing that's just when you're piecing your all of your parts together you're just going to want to make sure that each of your components can accommodate the same size piping just that way uh, make sure that the water flow is matching make sure that you don't want to have a, a pump that's pumping you know 5,000 gallons an hour but having a filter that can only handle 400 gallons an hour you're going to have major issues if you do that And I'm gonna try this out. I may end up modifying this just a little bit if I need to. And the idea is that if this isn't really drawing water how I want it to, or if I have issues with this getting clogged, I may end up putting like a T on here and making it to where it'll uh, spread it out and not be up against the bottom. But that's the basic concept right there. There's our pump, and looks like a uh, filter. So here's a, a preliminary filter. So if you wanted to have your pump submerged, you would attach that on, and then the water would just draw in. This is going to help prevent a lot of large debris. They also sell like nettings and other pre-filter screens and stuff to help make sure chunks aren't going into the pump. But since we're going to have that set up the way we are, it's not going to be necessary. So one of the things that we just discovered is that on our pump, we don't have the, the uh, fitting that's gonna allow us to connect the hose to either side. So that's probably something that I'm gonna end up having to get, but I can continue to set up the rest of the system in the meantime. So we'll move on. This is our um, fi another filter. And so we'll just take this off and it should have everything in there. So these types of fittings is what we're gonna be able to need. So hopefully if there's some extra, we'll be able to salvage those and use them on the pump. If not, then I'll have to make another trip to the store as well. So again, another large debris. And down in the bottom, we got the same good bacteria balls. And so now it's just gonna be a thing of setting these things to get up. Okay, so we've got everything out of our, our filter here and it's time to assemble this. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna install this pipe and as you notice, there's holes on either side. Uh, it's a you know basic, just you know plastic, kind of a, almost like a PVC. So when you put this in, the one thing you're gonna do is make sure that the holes are side to side. If it's up and down, then that will make it not make much sense because it's gonna be on the bottom and so it's not gonna be able to draw water uh, out at the bottom very easily. But if you have it out to the side, then it's gonna, draw the water out to the side on both sides. Okay, so this piece is gonna go in first. So we're gonna take our, uh, our nut here. That's gonna slide on there. The end's gonna come out of the back. And then we're going to put in our rubber gasket. And then we'll take one of our, our connections here. That's gonna go on the top or we'll so you, you can see it all slide it over the top. Sorry, I'm having a problem Englishing today. And then it's gonna go through the gasket and then it'll uh, connect to the plastic nut on the inside. And we'll just tighten that down. Like I said, just you have to feel and make sure that you're trying to not have those holes get off from side to side. Okay, and we should be able to just kind of tighten that by hand and that should be enough and as you can see down in there We got the holes side to side and now that is installed Okay, so now we're gonna put our bacteria balls in there try to clean off of any of the grass and stuff that's got on them Okay And then we'll put in our filters Oops. Just missed a couple of the bacteria balls. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, so fine material filter. Squeeze that and put that in. Okay, large material filter. Squeeze that and put that in. And all I'm doing is just making it to where they sit kind of flat in there. And then the next step will be installing the other exit pipe. And it's gonna be the same thing. Your gasket's gonna go around the threads here, the mill portion of it. That'll go in through here, and then it'll screw on to the nut to lock it in place. Okay, so that's nice and tight. And obviously we'll, you know, before we put it in its permanent home, we'll check to make sure for leaks and, you know, if we have to snug these down a little bit more to prevent it from stop leaking, then so be it. But in, after that, we put this lid back on, followed by this lid, and now that's ready to have some pipe run to it. Okay, so the next step is the UV filter. So we'll get this out. And it does look like, unfortunately, we're going to have to make a trip to the store just to buy the connection pieces for the pump. But it's the same concept. This is pretty much ready to go. You're just going to plug this in and then screw these on. And that's how you connect the, the hose. And these are stepped fittings. So on this one, you could use all the way down to, like, I believe it was a half-inch pipe. Uh, or maybe this is the three quarter inch all the way up to like an inch and a half. And so you just you know push it on until your pipe doesn't go on anymore. Okay. Make sure you get this lined up straight and that'll work a little better. So there's, so there's that. So now basically uh, we're ready to get most of it installed and I'll have to just figure out how I'm gonna connect these, uh, this pump, which is just a matter of buying the right fitting to screw in and then that's that. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is this is basically how the setup is gonna go. So the concept is this is drawing water in, this is pumping water out. This is the inlet, it goes in, hits the uh, large filter first, then goes through the fine filter, then comes out of here after it passes through the, the bio balls. I think I was calling them uh, bacteria balls earlier, bio balls, same concept. So the water then comes out of here, wraps around to this inlet, pumps through its thing, and then comes out. So what we're gonna do is just basically we wanna get the, the length of hose to connect these things. So this is gonna come here, and connect more or less here. Now, since I'm gonna have them close, I don't need a very long length of hose to connect the, the components. So I'm just gonna take my hose and I'm gonna cut it. And to do that, I'm gonna use my PVC cutters. And um, I used to do sprinklers, and so that's why I have such a, a big heavy duty thing here. Okay, so I'm just gonna measure it out. And it doesn't have to be anything exact. And obviously, you know, if you need it to be a little bit longer for whatever reason, you could always adjust it to whatever length that you need it to be. So I'm just gonna get it a, an approximate, put it in, and then let the things do its job. And that's that. So at this point, I could actually even just push this on to the smallest setting which is the three-quarter inch and just push it on basically till it stops and then I'll be able to do effectively the same thing over here I may end up taking this off just so that I can kind of twist it on there and then tighten it back on just to make it a little bit easier okay I still don't have my piece for here but I'm just gonna estimate and have this be roughly about that long that should be more than enough and I'll just repeat the process
okay okay so this is now my my trim down piece of hose you can still see it's plenty long this is going to go from the exit and that's going to be what connects to this little waterfall starter feature and i'm actually going to leave this as long as as it is just to have it set in place because i don't know exactly where i want to have the waterfall or where it's going to be quite yet and that gives me enough room once we do it to shorten it as needed in order to put it in place and i don't think i'll need clamps i just don't think there's gonna be that much pressure on the system but i'll keep an eye on it if it's leaking that's the other thing is you could always put a hose clamp on it just to get it nice and snug down as always 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 read your uh, instruction manuals so looking at this it came with these two sides on and these two sides off and we just connected them on not a big deal uh and i it was saying one was an inlet one was an outlet this is actually backwards and so reading it you always want to have the water inlet coming with the side that's closest to the power cord and then the outlet coming from the side the opposite end so this is the inlet this is the outlet and you can adjust these things to have them flip sides you can have this just this one over here you could have just this one over here either way so what we're going to do is basically because of how it's going to be set up i'm just going to take this one off going to unscrew this one to take it off unscrew the other side to take that off and reverse them so then that way it, this will the power cord will sit next to here so it's going to sit a little bit nicer um in you know once we have it set up and of course later on if we decide we want to adjust it to a different setting we can do that too and for the time being because i know how that hose is going to go on i'm not going to tighten that all the way down and then I'll switch the other side the same way. Just want to be careful when you're taking this off just to try to not damage the little rubber gasket because that's what's going to give you your waterproof ceiling on there. Make it watertight. Okay, finger that on like that. Get this one on. snug that one down so now when we have it setting on there now this will be a little bit closer so it's a little bit less bulky is all so again doesn't make too big of a difference this just allows this to connect to here and then we'll connect the other end of this on here so that way we can then just set it in place and let it do its thing so the, so the last step that we need is just got to get these attachments and then we can just finish plugging everything in and uh Turn it on. So for now, I'm just sitting it in there. And when the time comes, obviously we'll go in and we'll we'll hide the hide the box, probably sink it down. I should probably take the the outside paper off of it. All right, guys. So we just got back from the store. As you can see, we got the two pieces that are, are we got the uh, plumber's tape on there just to get them to where you know because there's no gasket. So these are now nice and tightened on, and uh, now we're ready just to connect the the hose to the pump and basically turn it on. Should do it there. I'm actually gonna take this off because I'm not gonna be able to twist the end. So this way. So I can twist the uh, end bib instead of the hopes. same thing with these ones
so now all of our hoses are connected and uh, basically we're just gonna plug it in I don't know if we're gonna have to fill the system up first we may because I doubt the pumps gonna be able to pump air but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it and as I said this is very very basic you know I, I don't want to leave the pump and all the filter system to the the you know the mercy of the elements so I'm going to need to put some type of like a little uh, housing of some sort just to protect these from the elements and of course we'll want them to make it look nice and accent the area and whatnot but for the time being we're just gonna uh, have them sitting there like I said so that way we can at least get the water being pumped and filtered same thing we gotta still tap in to an electrical supply so that way we can have power out here to plug our pumps in for the time being we're just running an extension cord so it definitely is not super pretty but like we said for right now we just want to get it in and functioning and then we'll make it pretty as time goes by okay so we got it plugged in and obviously this is not going to be something that, that's going to run continuously for the time being just because our weather is so unpredictable. This is not something that you would really want to get rained on. Uh, but we do want to let it run a little bit just that way we can test the system and then also uh, you know, make sure things are working. And then we'll uh, slowly get things to where they need to be with time. Yep, there's water coming in already. So I get the system primed up. And we get it filled with water. So then that way the uh, pump can actually can actually cause the vacuum. work its way out I uh, see the bubbles coming out so once that air works its way out then so here as you can see there was some air that had got caught into our, our pump system so as the air worked its way through and those bubbles come out the pump quiets down and the flow of water is good now Now we're just going to leave it running and uh, one of the things that was attractive about that pump is it actually is designed to run 24 hours a day seven days a week so we shouldn't have to worry about it getting overused and burnt out Alright guys, so as you can see, the, the pump is in, installed, all the pieces are connected, and it's running. 
So obviously the next, we still have a lot of work to do with it. We got to get it nice tucked away and hidden in, in its permanent home. We got to put protections over our, our filters and so on and so forth just to make them, uh, keep them out of the, the sun as much as possible, help preserve their life. But now we can at least let it run, let the water aerate, let the water filter. Hopefully that's going to help get this water to get nice and clear. And uh, we can start working on other, other aspects while resting assured that our water is getting filtered. So as always, guys, thank you for your support. We'll uh, tune in to the next update. When we get to the next uh, piece, I think we're going to be planting some, uh, some bulbs and various plants. And uh, we'll keep you guys updated as we progress through this project. So thank you for tuning in and thank you for your support.